Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are going to be doing a little bit different video. Uh, it's going to be a different type of commentary. Instead of being the guy, you know, trying to entertain, we're going to kind of go over some teaching moments and I think you guys will enjoy it. So those of you who are new to battleships and or new to the game period and are looking for some uh, beginner tips, uh, keep an eye out and I'll see if I can push some of the stuff out there for you guys so right off the bat we're in an Iowa that's kind of a common ship for me it's tier 7 uh, battleship for the Americans um, but that's not really the important thing here the important thing is how I use the Iowa in this match and some of the decisions I make that play out how this match ends so without further ado let's get this party started so right off the bat what am I doing sailing in reverse <clears throat> why am I sailing in reverse well I have come to uh, realize after many and many attempts at uh, many battles at this point in my world of warships legends career that whenever you're on a map such as this trident that you can have your target acquisition over halfway across the map it's generally a good idea to put some distance between you and the bad guys. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. And this has become a thing for me recently with my new, more patient approach to World of Warships. I have been playing a lot more laxed, a lot more patient at the beginning of matches, and then being able to use my patience early to be more aggressive later. And it has paid off quite a bit. Now, this King George has not seen me, because he hasn't had a scout ahead of him like I did in the two cruisers, and he has turned broadside on in front of an Iowa. Shots out. Now, notice I gave him about a two full mil lead, and we get a nice solid penetration. Now, most battleships that I've come against, with the uh, top tier British and the top tier Americans, being a slight ex uh, exception to the rule, I give that two mil lead. And I might shorten it a little bit or lengthen it a little bit, depending on the direction of travel. Now, a Baltimore is a cruiser, but it's a heavy cruiser. It does go fast, but it's not that much faster than, say, an Iowa, which is the top tier uh, battleship that I'm in. Uh, with the right build, this thing is capable of over 30 knots, and that Baltimore is capable for about 34 knots, maybe a little faster if you've got a good build for speed. Um, that's not how I, I stack my Baltimore, but if that's what you're into, then yes, it is a very quick little uh, heavy cruiser. But he's broadside on to a battleship, and we have fired and may have been detected this entire time, and any time you're broadside, you're just begging for these 16-inch guns to ruin your life. Now, notice that I'm still relatively, you know, angled away from everything. I'm not really having to do a whole lot. I'm bow tanking the enemy, which gives them the minimal cross-section of my ship to shoot at. Uh, they're shooting at my armor effect. Now, the King George still broadside on. He's trying to get to that island. He thinks he can make it. Unfortunately for him... Oh, he's lucky. He's lucky that that island just took some of those. I thought we were just going to delete him right there. But now that they're behind the island and they are no longer capable of spotting me and or shooting at me, now I'm going to start making my move. Now I'm going to turn broadside to the direction they spawned in. Why? Because I'm less likely to be shot. It makes sense, right? You don't want to give up the weak sides of your ship while people can shoot you. <laughs> it sounds like such a simple step, but I've done it too many times. I've done it right off the bat. I'll turn, I'll get all my guns to bear, and somehow I either citadel somebody or they citadel me back, and uh, that's not preferable. You don't want to be trading citadels early in the game. But King George is playing with RNG here. Now I am back to uh, cutting these guys off. I'm sailing mostly straight to them. I'm a little over-angled for him, but I knew the Baltimore was out there, so I didn't want to give myself up to the Baltimore, because King George is most likely going to be shooting. He's actually firing armor-piercing, but usually they're shooting high explosive, because it's a British battleship. So I figured I was more safe to bow tank the Baltimore, which has really good 203mm high penetration rounds, 
than to worry about the King George. Now the King George plays with RNG one too many times, and there's the Citadel finally finishing him off. Now this Baltimore, fresh out of friends, is probably feeling some type of way right now, but he's still thinking that he's got a chance here, and he is picking on my Atlanta that's on my team. Now the Atlanta has overextended himself. He was he had time to get behind the island over there where he would have been still in range but able to keep himself hidden and he didn't do that. So I told him I'm going to try to get rid of this guy in this shot. I put good rounds on target. He's angled away which means his citadel is juicy. Even with these big guns, if a cruiser is angled slightly away, that means I'm more likely to get a citadel on him because I'm less likely to get an overpenetration. Unfortunately, we didn't kill him fast enough, and uh, he kills our Atlanta. But, luckily for us, the Miyoko, who was also with us, finishes him off, and we can start making our move towards the center of the map. Now, there's a couple ways that battleships usually play this. Most of the time, you'll see the battleship just sail right down the side of the map and then make the long turn. However, there has been a lot of time already elapsed, and our team is losing the match currently. So I make the decision, rather than going all the way out and around, I'm going to go straight through back across the center of the map. Now this is a little bit of a dangerous play, because I potentially, not knowing where all of the enemy ships are, could potentially put myself into a bad position. And that would get me into a lot of trouble. But, my team is falling apart. I have to do something, and I am the only ship capable, in my mind, not, you know, I, I never count on my teammates on any multiplayer online game, because every time I have, I've managed to get salty because my team is just usually completely potatoed at the most possible moment that I need them, as in the Miyoko that was capping the base, sailing away from the base. Why? I have no idea. <laughs> but... On our way back across, we're going to start capping the base. And by the time we get to the other side, being in a battleship, we should have this base capped. It takes one minute for one ship to cap this base. So we have an Akatsuki at maximum range. Now, I gave him my standard lead, but he is a very, very long ways away. And that ship can make a lot of ground real quick. And as you can see, I didn't lead him enough. Uh, so the next shot that I take, I give him well off of, I give him a full, a full scope plus an extra, basically a full mill there, uh, one of the large mills. And so we're trying to sh shoot at him here and notice he's kind of sailing towards us a little bit. I failed to recognize that. And because of that, that shot, when he gets spotted again, is going to land just past him. So, unfortunately, we managed to miss him yet again. But, he's sailing towards us, he's getting more dangerous, we do manage to cap the, the base, and uh, the Miyoko got back into base to help us cap it, so thanks to him for that. But, the Akatsuki is going to run out of patience here. He's getting too aggressive for his own good, he has no health, he's taking on two battleships and a cruiser, and that's not going to end well for you. So, I start a, a intercept course here, because I want him dead. And sure enough, we get the detection, whether it was us or somebody else detecting him because he fired his guns, it doesn't matter. He's detected, and the Colorado finishes him before my rounds get there. This is where we start to turn the tide of this battle. This Colorado, me, and the Miyoko behind us, mostly this Colorado and me, are going to have to take over this match. There are five ships against three. We need to make this happen. Now, the Colorado lays in an intercept course for this Amagi. Now the Amagi is f sailing in reverse. We can tell that by the water on the bow of or as on the stern of his ship. And he fires at us. We start turning, but he does not. We manage to take basically no damage, but we're also getting shot from the right. So now I have to put myself into a bad position where I'm going to have to make a uh, choice one way or the other. I have to make a choice here. Now the Amagi is starting to sail forward. We can see the water on the front of a ship. Another way to easily detect a ship's movement is to watch the smoke from the smokestack. That's usually the first clue of which direction the ship is traveling. So if you watch the smoke on the smokestack, if they start to sail in reverse, you'll see it. If they start going forward, you'll see it. Well before the water shows up when they get moving fast enough on the, the uh, ship model. So. 
with that in mind, we have a Miyoko over here. And like I said, this Colorado and I are going to have to make things happen. And this Colorado has been fantastic in the last couple shots. Taking out the uh, destroyer, taking out the cruiser. Now we have an Iowa, maximum range. Well, not quite maximum range, but close to maximum range. We give them the two mil lead and we get nothing. <laughs> really? Well, we get one ricochet, it looks like. I, you know, I have fired at many, many. Of course, Colorado pulling it off again with the Citadels finishing them off. And at this point, I was in there, I was talking to the, uh, the Colorado. I was like, man, I wish I was as lucky as you are. I said, every shot that I take completely misses. Even though I am aiming the shots well, they are on target, but they're missing low or they're missing high. And there's nothing I can really do about that. But the Amagi is behind the island, which gives me the time I need to go after this Colorado. So I turn towards the Colorado just in time to deflect most of those rounds. He gets maybe a, an over-penetration or something, but he's broadside to me. That's not a good position to be in, and he pays for it with a penetration. The Amagi is going straight for our Colorado, and he has support from an Atlanta hiding on the backside of an island that we can't touch at this point. But all I need is for that Colorado not to die long enough for me to take out this Colorado. Because then I can focus all of my attention on either the Atlanta or the Amagi, depending on who shows themselves first. We're battle tanking. Colorado is not. And Colorado gets another lucky, only a pen penetration against him. Atlanta appeared for a moment to be coming towards me. So that's why I was checking him, but then I realized he's still firing. I look over my corn or over my shoulder, and the Atlanta managed to burn our Colorado to the ground. Now I am essentially solo against a two battleships and an Atlanta. The Miyoko is trying. I'm not saying that they're not doing anything, but I'm in the center of all these guys. That time RNG finally catches up to the Colorado who's sailing broadside on for so long that I had three different reloads with the front guns that are 16 inch guns. So now I have to be careful. I, every fiber of my being wanted to turn this ship completely around. But those are also 16 inch, 410 millimeter guns looking at me from behind. If I turn this ship sideways, he will delete me, no doubt, every single time. So I'm going to use the rear guns. He's not moving very fast, so we don't give him the full lead. And we catch him with, what, two penetrations right there? 9,600 damage? Two out of three shots. I mean, you only get three guns on the rear. So that was a huge hit for just those three guns. We didn't get a Citadel, but we got pretty good. Now, he's firing his guns again, and he's, he's not uh, salvo firing. He's volley firing. He's firing his guns one cycle at a time, which isn't a bad move because you can catch battleships that way when they're uh, trying to turn. Because they're expecting you to fire all your shots, so they might turn into the other ones. Now the Amagi, I get a lucky Citadel on him. He was angled, but he was slightly over-angled, and RNG finally catching up to me and helping me with that kill. But the lesson to be learned in that situation was do not turn fully broadside. We've just seen what happens when two battleships go up against another battleship broadside on. I deleted both of them. It's just a matter of time. Any time that you're broadside on in front of a battleship, you're playing with RNG. It's basically Russian roulette. You have the power of your death in your hands at any moment. <laughs> so anytime you're broadside, you're begging for a paddling. So now we have an Atlanta. There's a few things about the Atlanta that we need to think about. The Atlanta has ridiculous rate of fire, but they're small guns. Has a good chance to set you on fire, but it's not the greatest chance. It's just the sheer amount of shells that it sends at you generally tends to set you on fire because it's almost always high explosive unless you're in a cruiser at close range, in which case it can citadel you so fast that you don't even know what hits you. <laughs> but it also has oh crap torpedoes. <laughs> oh crap torpedoes are the American equivalent of the worst torpedoes in the game. But... You know, even the worst torpedoes in the game can sink the ever-living crap out of you if they're fired from behind an island and you sail into them. <laughs> so I am being very, very cautious here, taking a wide approach around this island, giving myself plenty of time to potentially catch 
the torpedoes that I'm expecting. We know the last known of the Atlanta was on the backside of this island that we're approaching. We don't know which way he went. He was kind of sailing in this direction, but we haven't spotted him, so where did he go? Well, any moment now, he's going to pop up. He's capping B. And so immediately, because I'm already, I already have the guns facing that direction, because I anticipated him being over there, I can get the quick shot on him. I put a salvo out. He disappears immediately after I shoot. But luckily, our aim was true, and down he goes. He didn't have any health, so all we had to do was touch him. So, hopefully, this helps some of you newer folk with some of your positioning in a match and decision-making during the match to help you do better. I'm not saying I'm the best. I'm never going to say that because I'm not. <laughs> you guys just get to see all my good matches. But, hopefully... This has been a decent teaching moment for you guys, even though it's not the best, highest damage game you've ever seen. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.